Today, we're going to talk about great career audiobooks you should get. I didn't always love audiobooks, as I've talked about in previous episodes. I didn't get into audiobooks, <coughs> excuse me, until I became the primary caregiver of, of um, my wife and I's first son. And he's going to be nine this summer. So it was a while ago. And if you've had a baby on your hands <laughs> and it's a healthy baby, it'll be very active. And my baby was very active. And so I couldn't sit there and shout to Brian Terry and his wonderful book, Black Food. You can see my essay in there. But I couldn't like just grab a book and be like this, you know, <laughs> my kid is pooping and peeing and running all over the place trying to grab scissors and stuff. So I got into audio, <coughs> excuse me, I got into audiobooks, <coughs> ended up being this wonderful experience. And I never went back. So I mean, physical books, I mean, come on, like you can see this is a fraction of the books that I own, but audiobooks became part of how I enjoyed things. Particularly when I got into more and get into walking, I was running for a period of time, um, traveling, being on a plane, and being able to just be immersed. And then when I started making audiobooks later, which was after the fact, um, then I had a whole new appreciation because my, <coughs> excuse me, my first major bestseller, I had a bestseller before him, my first like major one on my imprint was um, the, the Bite Says Entrepreneur, which is up here somewhere. Um, Y'all might be more familiar with the deluxe edition with the purple thing. Um, but the regular edition, Y'all made it a bestseller, which I appreciate. That was like 2016. And that was my first audiobook experience, actually recording one. And it gave me a sense of appreciation for the work that goes into it. And now I've done like a professional audiobook downtown with an engineer and all that stuff and the headphones. And, you know, I'm like uh, Eddie Murphy and uh, Rick James in the booth. If you're of my age, you probably know what reference I'm talking about, you know, and just enjoying the whole experience, but also coming to work. So the books I'm recommending aren't just like good content. The books themselves are fantastic. Like, just if you read them, fine. But the audiobooks themselves are great. And I'm happy to kind of give my recommendations from both perspectives, not only as an author, but also as, as a narrator. All right, so the first one I'd recommend would be Upstream by Dan Heath. Um, if you've watched the show at all, you know I really enjoyed this book. Dan Heath and he's uh, really popular his book's really popular with his book his uh, brother chip so chip heath they did uh, a lot of classic books from like a decade ago to be honest i miss all of them but i caught this one <laughs> so it's just him alone without his brother and it is a fantastic book i read it probably about a year year and a half ago when i was working on career remix there's a few quotes from from dan heath in there from the book um <clears throat> but it talks about systems <clears throat> and the analogy is that um, there's a great analogy where upstream comes from, but I want to paraphrase the analogy of the analogy. And so if there's issues coming down, um, issues coming downstream, then all you're trying to do is fix the problem, right? So you're just trying to fix the problem. But if you go upstream, you can figure out what the systemic issue is. So I think the subtitle, if I remember correctly, is the quest to solve problems before they even happen right? Fantastic. And he gives like a ton of examples of that. I quote it in, again, Career Remix a few times. I actually mentioned it in a, in a few uh, previous episodes of The Bringing Word Show too, which I'll reference in a minute. Um, but it's a fantastic book. Audiobook is great too. And it was really good to listen to. I, I want to say it's about the same length of, as Career Remix, maybe about seven, eight hours. And it's absolutely worth your time, particularly like your system could be like me where you're an entrepreneur and you're creating stuff. I have a private coaching practice, as I mentioned before, or as I hinted at before. And so that could be, that could be your system. Your system could be, you know, I have a, um, a five and, a, and an eight year old. So it's like, so the system could be your family systems and, and how, how you handle that. But if you deal with systems, you got to listen to this one. I can't recommend it higher. Excuse me. I actually did a video related to it, uh, a better way to reach your goals where I talk about one of the biggest principles that's in upstream. I highly recommend you check out the video. <coughs> Excuse me, all the videos on the, um, on Bring Your, Bring Your Worth on the channel and TV show. I have a couple there like 20 minutes, but most, most of them are like between eight and 15 minutes. They're not that long. And so hopefully I can distill a lot of this, you know, 
it's like a 300 400 page book so if you do not get a chance to check out the audiobook or if you want kind of like a, a taste of the audiobook be sure and check out this video it'll give you an idea of one of the principles that's talked about and dan did an excellent job of breaking it down um, another one i recommend audiobook would be the dip it's hella short i think it's hella cheap too um let me check yeah i have the guy right here it's ten dollars it's ten dollar audiobook you know, audiobooks are going for 30, 40, 50 bucks, bucks nowadays. Mine is about $25. So that's kind of the going rate. This one's like $10. That's because the book is like this tiny. I think the audiobook itself is about an hour and a half. It's done by Seth himself. If you're familiar with uh, Akimbo, which is not only his, his, the workshops that he founded, which I was a part of several years ago. I guess it was just three years ago. This pandemic is messing with my brain. <laughs> Luckily, not in a, in a bad way, um, just as far as time. And then uh, Kimbo.com, the podcast, which I love. I just listened to it this morning. It comes out every Wednesday morning. And um, he talks about um, um, when you should quit and when you should stay. And that's what the dip is. And if you're going to make good moves in your career, you have to know when to leave. Um, I was just talking to someone. Yeah, I, was, I talked to a couple of people over the past week for some articles I was working on, some research I was doing, and we we're talking about quitting. And um, for some of them, they looked at quitting their startup or their business, whatever, as a quote unquote bad thing. And sometimes it's time to go so you can make room for other things. And that's okay. Seth does an excellent job as far as breaking down the criteria if you're confused about that. Um, a lot of the coaching work that I do is about people wanting to leave their jobs. I mean, Career Remix, this comes out of the great resignation. And so many people, the um, people that I coach the, regularly through um, my private coaching or through uh, the coaching I do uh, within organizations, they're like, when the hell do I know I'm supposed to leave? Am I the problem? Do I need to change? Is our organization a problem? Do they need to change? Are we the problem? Like, you know, like oil and milk, like oil and milk, oil and water. <laughs> I was thinking about a hip hop reference. You get extra points if you know a hip hop reference I was thinking about with milk. <laughs> but my whole point is like, it's like, are we just bad chemistry together? And is it not going to work out? You know, it's just a bad, like a bad relationship. You got to have some type of criteria to know that. Um, frankly, in most cases, we're part of the problem and we're not the entire problem. But before you quit your job, the dip talks about that. I think I quote the dip a couple times in this as well. Forgive me, I wrote the book like a year ago. So <laughs> I can't remember. I think the dip is in there as well. <clears throat> Definitely some gems from Seth Godin in there. Um, I've connected with him once and I consider him a mentor from afar. So thank you, Seth, for all your great work. Check out Akimbo for sure. Um, and then uh, check out my video episode from probably about a year ago. I can't believe I can say that. The show's been around for a year and a half um, where I talk about when should I quit something. It's super short. I think this video is like six minutes long. If you're in that situation, just check out the video. Um, I've quit a lot of things. And um, one of the biggest compliments I've gotten over the years is how I follow through with things. Like, again, this is the 210th or so episode of the Bring Your Worst Show. I've been under the weather because of allergies and sinus stuff for most of the winter. So I haven't been doing the Wednesday live shows, which I mentioned in my newsletter over at joindamon.me, you know, and, but the Monday and Friday shows, it's been consistent for a year and a half. I started the December before last. So that's been one of the compliments I've gotten over the years, which I've taken to heart. I do not, like I take consistency, consistency, if I can say it, consistency seriously. But I also knew that with my sinuses with make sure my kids are straight all the things that are going on in my life that the wednesday shows the live shows were too much so i took a break there are other things i was doing that i just flat out quit but then that gave me room to show up for you that gave me room to you know go to ted in a few weeks up in vancouver they gave me room to have the keynote over at uh, the mendel center i was look forward to seeing y'all there up in a uh, in Southwest Michigan at Lake Michigan College. That gave room for that. They gave me room to write a career remix, which there's no way in hell I would have written a book if I was overburdened with the stuff that really didn't have a space in my life. 
This video gets into all that. <laughs> it's like five, six minutes long. My summary actually was probably longer than the video, but it goes back to the dip. Again, Seth's work is awesome if you're familiar with it. You know, um, again, I consider him a North Star when it comes to this stuff. The dip is a good place to start if you're not sure if it's time to quit. And the audiobook is excellent. You let's do it in an hour. All right, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Another, another, another vibe. This is this comes from the creative side. Elizabeth Gilbert is a writer. You're probably familiar with her work, particularly uh, Eat, Pray, Love, which ended up being a gift and a curse because then it really took her away from the type of writing that she liked doing because it sold, you know, 15 million copies and people either loved or hated her and it was hard for her to do her work. This is almost like an exercise or a, a more like an exorcism <laughs> of, 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 I think, some of the demons that came out of that, which if you're any type of creative, if you're a, a creative accounting, hopefully in a good way, <laughs> Accountants are creative, but hopefully not too creative. Um, if you um, are a traditional creative, like you're an artist, like the beautiful, you know, Jimmy Baldwin, or should I say James Baldwin? I feel weird calling him Jimmy. James Baldwin in the back, you're that kind of artist. If you're a creator like myself, where you do startups and you create content and you write books, whatever type of creative you are, and as Chase Jarvis says, we're kind of all creatives. This is a book about finding that creative magic when you feel like you lost it. And sometimes <clears throat> when it comes to career issues, it's about finding that spark again and figuring out where things should go. And that's difficult to do sometimes. Um, yeah, and she talks about that. And I love that she talks about it in such a vulnerable, beautiful way. Um, yeah, I can't say more about it. I, if I can start talking about it more, it'll be another hour of the show. But fantastic book audiobook is excellent by the way she narrates it herself um i've been to like two of her ted talks if you watch her ted talks which are very popular go to ted.com check out elizabeth gilbert um I'm trying to remember i think i mentioned um i think i have links to her ted talk <coughs> excuse me on the channel now i'm trying to remember but if you go to youtube.com slash brown dame i think i mentioned her ted talks in some of the playlists Speaking of playlists, a good pairing to this would be my playlist for Bring Your Show, Smart Creative Routines and Habits. She talks a lot about showing up, which is another thing, going back to Seth Godin, um, and making creativity a habit, whether that's writing, whether that's uh, going to work every day. Um, me showing up for y'all for this show, again, um, for uh, 80 weeks now? I started the week of Christmas of 2020, so whatever that is, but showing up for y'all every single week, oftentimes three times a week. That's the habit, whether I'm feeling under the weather, whether I feel great, whether, you know, I have a book that I'm hype about that's just coming out or there isn't much going on in the world and I'm just you're shooting the stuff with y'all, still here. And so showing up and making the routine helps create the magic happen. I have a playlist of probably about 12, maybe 13 now. Videos, again, each one's like 10 minutes long or something. Knock yourself out, have fun. If you feel like you're in a rut, you can't find that magic, think about your routines and your habits. This is a good place to start with this playlist. Excuse me. Recommend The Art of War by Sun Tzu. This is not a new book, <laughs> but stays on the best sellers list. I forget what century Sun Tzu was around. Um, but it is fantastic, classic, <coughs> extremely short book. This version of it, though, the audio book is by Aidan Gillen. Forgive me, you know, for my uh, Scottish and, and Scottish and or Irish uh, listeners, because I'm butchering his name because he's actually from the you can hear the accent. And he um, he played one of the major characters in Game of Thrones. He is also was Carsetti, which I know him from in The Wire, the guy that was running for mayor of DC. Excellent actor. He's never had an accent in many of his roles. And then he's saying that he's doing the performing, I should say, the audiobook, and it is fantastic. And I got like, I don't think I have any copies up here. I got like three copies of Art of War. Um, I have the 48 Laws of Power and other books that were inspired by that. Like my collection for, connected to, I have the five rings, which is connected to the art. Like I got all those joints. 
And for me to discover this, I discovered it like three, four years ago and it blew my mind. I was like, because I already know it by heart. Like the book is super short. Art of War, I think the audio book's probably like 45 minutes long, but the book itself is like tiny. Woo, he kills it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So if you're not familiar with Art of War, there's a reason why it's classic strategy discussions when it comes to running your business, which as I say in Career Remix, the job is your employers. If you leave your job or you're fired or it's a merger, whatever, they can replace you. The career is yours. Yours to keep. You're going to take that joint with you when you leave your job. You need a strategy when it comes to your career. I mean, that's what, again, the new book Career Remix is about. You need a strategy. That you got to own that. So I, it's easier for me because I literally own my own business. So it's like David Brown Incorporated. Like, it's my joint. This is my show. I'm the executive producer. I'm the editor. I'm the talent, right? So it's easy to say, oh, okay, I'm in charge of this. But if you have a day job, you're still in charge of it. It's just way more obvious when looking at me that I'm in charge of this joint. But you're in charge as well. See, I'm, I'm putting my coaching hat in. I'm going to relax. Art of War. <laughs> you need it on your shelf. Get the audiobook though, because it is fantastic. If you already got it on your shelf and you already know it as well as I do, get this joint anyway. You know, shout out to Aiden. And yeah, I was already a fan back from The Wire 20 years ago. This made me an even bigger fan. Um, related to that, Steve Harvey's Money Advice, Why Titles Don't Matter. <laughs> You're like, what does Steve Harvey have to do with this? He had a great conversation on Earn Your Leisure, which is a podcast uh, run by two, two young guys. Shout out to them. Y'all are fantastic. I've loved your work for, for years now at this point. I think you guys have been doing it for uh, five, six years. So you correct me in the comments if you happen to be listening. Um, but they interviewed Steve Harvey, which is, he's most known for this generation family feud. Um, my generation will be the Kings of comedy and, um, his hosting on, um, on the different comedy specials and just being a, a all out comedian, but he's similar to Shaq. He's similar to, um, Nas. If you're from the hip hop world, Jay-Z, even from the hip hop world where they had one particular type of entertainer like run and but while they had their run they started diversifying and doing all this stuff and now he's like exactly producing this and he has this um this compound down south i think it's in atlanta where you know he's like and he's starting to film movies there and all this stuff and there's a certain strategic element but as i talked about in the video which is worth watching he was actually broken homeless for a period of time. And that was after he got some success. And then he got some success, which again, my generation would be the Kings of Comedy, legendary movie that came out about 20 years ago, <clears throat> you know, which got a lot of our attention, even though we were familiar with him. But then he talks about in this interview that he lost all that money. <laughs> and I almost ended up, you know, being in trouble again for another reason. And now he's about to back up. The strategy that he talks about, particularly what I talk about, it's only a 10 minute video that I that I um, that I have on there. The strategy that he talks about in this interview that I highlight in this show, this episode, fantastic. It ties really well with the art of war. And because, you know, like like life, life moves fast. I'll put it like that. Two years ago, I did if you said, Damon, you're gonna have a YouTube show and you're gonna be 200 episodes in by March of 2022. And at least here in America, March of 2020 represented some things. It represented some, from a lot of things for a lot of people in the Western world. So things move so fast, you need to have a strategy beyond right now. Again, you got my coat. I got my coaching hat on. Let me relax. <laughs> Speaking of coaching, though, my last recommendation, highly, highly recommend, might be my favorite book of the list, would be The Big Leap by Kay Hendricks. This came out about 25 years ago. He's done a few books recently, but he just talked about this one book that he did, rightfully so, for like a decade and a half. I don't think he did anything else but talk about this book, as he should have. It is a fantastic book. It talks about why, in my opinion, my interpretation, why we sabotage ourselves. When we see a, an opportunity where the classic example, which I mentioned in Career Remix, and I can also mention it briefly in um, 
in my previous independent book, Built From Now. Thanks to all you yeah, that supported in 2020 um, or in 2021, um, where you have lottery winners who might have been, in some cases, literally praying to win the lottery. They win the lottery and then uh, you might know the stats, like 99% of them end up being broke or in worse financial problem within a year. Part of it might be preparation, which I talk about in Career Remix, as well as in Bill from now, the previous book. But part of it too, which is what, Gay, what I want to say Gay Talese, who's one of my favorite writers, Gay Hendricks, <laughs> what Gay Hendricks says is that it's also um, an upper limit problem. <coughs> where even though you might be going through challenges, and I'll just talk about career, so I'm gonna get into the personal. You might be having challenges career-wise, but you know who your boss is. Um, you know the coworkers, even the ones that you don't like. You know how to deal with them, you know who they are, you know how to avoid them. You might hate your commute if you're commuting again, you know, after, as, as we get further into the pandemic. If you're back to commuting, you might hate your commute, but you're comfortable with. And so if you're not accepting that there is actually some benefits, some comfort level that you haven't faced as far as the situation that you're in, particularly career-wise, then Hendrix believes that you'll actually start to sabotage those opportunities so you can get back into your comfort zone. He gets much deeper into it. The audiobook is fantastic. It was one of the first major audiobooks that I got around that same era um, that, um, that my kid was born. And uh, my first kid was born and uh, <coughs> it is a fantastic book. It holds up well. I listen to it about every other year. So another one that I would recommend as far as uh, a pairing to this will be Brene Brown top five, why you should ignore critics. I've been wanting to do a video about this concept that I heard her talk about on stage literally for years. It wasn't gonna be a video, it was gonna be something else, but I knew I had to write about it in some form. Obviously, I didn't have the YouTube show when I saw her at TED. Oh my gosh, I think she talked about this at TED like eight years ago. And it was just like, I was like, I, I gotta remember this joint. And finally, I did a show about it. I think it premiered about two weeks ago. Um, hope you enjoy it. But it's a really simple method to uh, keep the critics out of your ear. And that's part of the issue that we have with Hendrick's upper limit problem. It's not always the internal limits, but also the limits that other people are saying and we're embracing them and internalizing them. So Brene Brown gets into that. I also have a playlist related to Brene Brown. You go over to the YouTube channel and check out all that. Today, we're gonna to talk about basic YouTube equipment for beginners. It's a little bit different for me. As I hinted at earlier, this is my, I think this is gonna be my 241st episode, I think. I think I checked it right before we got online. And so, yeah, I've been doing it for a while. The uh, the show launched December, I want to say 22nd, whatever the Equinox is, so or the Winter Solstice. So December 22nd, I believe that Monday of 2020. So it was a really intense time to launch something new. Um, I make a living, again, as a speaker. I've done several TED Talks. Um, as an author, as a journalist, as a coach. I coach you one-on-one -on -one over at danbrown.net. And when the pandemic hit, I was like, how can I stay connected to y'all? I'm used to going to like the TED conference. I'm used to being active. You see me, my hands going back and forth. I'm used to sharing a drink with y'all, talking about stuff, learning from you just as you're learning from me. And suddenly all of us were at home. It's like, how can I connect with y'all? That's what got me on this, this venture. I have a newsletter at joindamon.me, joindamon.me, it's for free. Every Wednesday at 5.55 a.m. you get a message from me with particular insights or what's on my mind, things like that, kind of like an inside track. And today's Wednesday, obviously, so y'all would have gotten a newsletter a few hours ago if you subscribed. And I talk about this in a newsletter where I'm like, it was this, the first time in my life, aside from when we now have two kids, aside from when our two kids were born, it was the first time in my life where I felt as an adult where I felt completely disconnected from the people that I wanted to connect with, right? And so be, I'm used to being able to go to the conferences, to travel, to meet people on the road, to, you know, launch a book and then be able to do a book tour. Like I'm used to doing that. Even when I had my smaller books back in the day where I didn't have a whole lot of funding from the publisher or from myself, I still was able to make it work. And there are circumstances outside of my control where it's like, you have to stay at home. That's what got this show started. And, and hitting almost 250 episodes, I realized that 
and again, it'll be two years and a few months. I'm like, well, there's certain things that I take for granted in doing this show, you know, two to three times a week, because the Wednesday show is usually live. I don't always do live shows, but I always do the Monday and Friday shows. In doing all those episodes, there's certain techniques, certain things, like the way that things are lit, the microphone that I use, there's certain details that I take for granted now, but a year and a half, two years ago, I was like, I don't know. And there were some decent videos about the equipment, but it seemed to be either people saying, use your iPhone, which, you know, for the recorded show, not this one, but not for the live show, but for the recorded show, Monday and Wednesday, Monday and Fridays, I do use my cell phone, which if you want to get meta for a second, this is my cell phone. <laughs> it's currently connected to Amazon, so I can't show you everything. Um, but so they either said that, or they said, here's some equipment. It's not that, that expensive. It's only like $1,000, $2,000. And I was like, I got two little kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? I live in Las Vegas, which isn't as expensive as Southern California, but it's not cheap here either. You know, I've lived in much cheaper places. You know, I got bills to pay. We got a mortgage. I'm, I'm not trying to do all that. And at that time, year and a half ago, two years ago, I didn't know if this was going to work. Um, and that's, again, I talk about that in, in the new book, Career Remix, where it's okay to do things that aren't aren't necessarily going to work. It's okay to have a short timeline for the stuff that you're doing until you figure out it might be something bigger. Now, knowing the worth of what you do, you should try to understand that from the get-go. But understanding how long something's going to last, sometimes you're not going to know until you get into it. And frankly, I didn't know I'd be hitting 250 episodes. I should hit it next week, week after next. Early September, we're definitely gonna be at 250. I couldn't have predicted that a year and a half, two years ago. I didn't know. If you don't know, then that means you, even if you have the money, even if you can borrow the money, whatever the case may be, lease it or whatever, it doesn't make much sense to overinvest if you're starting, frankly, some new shit. It, like, it doesn't make any sense. I, I share that with my clients, my coaching clients, as well as my consulting clients all the time. Let's not overinvest in this. Time-wise, money-wise, make sure your resources are sharp. Because then, let's say this YouTube channel didn't work. It's working. Let's say it didn't work for whatever reason. I got tired of it. Y'all didn't want to hear from me three times a week. Whatever the case may be, I would have already dropped three, four, or five grand on it. That leads to today. What I want to do is have a really simple video. I'll try to keep it around 30 minutes, 35 minutes sharing some of the equipment, basic brass tacks of what I do, what I got, and what works for me on a budget. Everything in here, if you get it in total, costs around 300 US dollars. That's it. So I've had this YouTube channel, gotten great feedback. It's led to me getting um, new coaching clients such as yourself. Um, it's led to me getting um, major keynotes, including keynotes on the road. Now that we're starting to open up again, a lot of that and interest in me and my work came from doing this channel. So a $300 investment and a lot of time, let's keep it real, turned into something that um, has been profitable, profitable for me. Now it's hard, hard to make a profit on doing these types of videos. There's millions of videos about that. I am not an expert, <laughs> right? But it does lead to other things. And those other things have been very profitable for me. So it ends up being part of a money generator for me, quite frankly, and a way to let people know who I am. And so if you see me on the YouTube video, this is how I coach. So if you end up approaching me or I end up talking with you and we talk about coaching together, there's no surprises. That ends up being a great time benefit and resource benefit for everybody involved. It's just one simple example, but I digress. What I want to do today is talk about these basic tools that I use to, you know, to, to connect with y'all. So let's get into it. All right. So one simple example of the, um, of the uh, tools that I use and the results of it um, is available right now. I'm actually doing a special thing with uh, the Bring Your Worst show where I'm making excerpts of some of my older books available. This is my book that came out a year and a half ago called uh, Build From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, and Nourish the World. Here's a deluxe edition. It is available right here. It's available everywhere books are sold. It's actually part of my imprint, so 
buy this and you support me, so I appreciate it. But there's a lot of love for this book. Thank you for all the support. This is uh, one of my favorite books that I've done ever, you know, next to Career Remix. So thank you all for the support. I'm actually having excerpts of the audiobook run as special episodes of the Bring Your Worst show. The audiobook was recorded right there. <laughs> I, this is my office. I have a closet over there and I'll get into some of the details of the tools that I use. I record the whole thing right there. You can go listen to it. It's not quite as polished as my latest book, Career Remix, on an audiobook there because that audiobook was done in a studio downtown. <laughs> Shout out to MGB Music. I'll go ahead and throw a link over there so you can listen to that in comparison. But for a home audiobook and something from my own publishing company, it's really damn good. That was done over there. So go ahead and listen to it, check it out, and that will give you some ideas of the results of this on the audio front, and then we'll get into the YouTube front as well. So we're kind of united. Okay, let's start with the YouTube front. The newer ring light. Big fan of this. Um, I was um, a family member of mine and a couple other folks. We were all kind of putzing around with the, um, with YouTube and with doing things online and all that. And this was, some of this stuff happened before the pandemic. So I want to say 2019. Um, and then I've had my coaching practice for a while. I have coaching clients around the globe. So obviously not all of them are in person. And um, so shout out to all of them. We kind of all experimented all at the same time um, and figure out what light works best for us. This is actually a ring light. I cannot show you because I'm actually using it right now. You can actually see it in my glasses, right? So if you see the videos, you see it in my glasses. Um, it's a ring light, it's, as it said, about 18 inches, so about yay big, about the width of what I'm showing you on here. Um, this works for a lot, of, a lot of really great reasons. Number one, at this point, it's around $100. So it's around $100. It might have been a little bit more when I got it, um, I would have gotten it about a year and a half ago after the, um, the show started to pick up steam, because I went through about three different lights trying to keep it super cheap. Like I was getting lights that were like $10, $20. And I live in the desert. I don't know where you live, obviously. I've lived all across the country and the light is different depending on where you live. The challenge here in Las Vegas is we're in the desert. It doesn't matter if it's winter time, doesn't matter if it's summertime, which are at the tail end of summer here in Vegas. Doesn't matter if it's fall, which is around my birthday and things are starting to get a little darker or springtime, whatever. There's always intense light. My window is right here, so I'm pointing this direction. And so for my earlier episodes, if you go to the Bring Your Wear show at youtube.com slash Brown Damon or scroll up to the previous episodes from like December, excuse me, in January, December of 2020, excuse me, January of 2021, you'll see that I look like Two-Face or like, because I was like, oh, there's plenty of light in here. And I was like, let me just roll out the window. And it's just like this light or the opposite, which if you have little kids or other people that you take care of, older adults, someone who's dependent on you, let's put it like that. I would be recording stuff at night, which it will be of no help. And there's a couple early episodes where, you know, I look like I'm, you know, doing a hostage video. And it's like, that's not, that's not obviously the intention. These are great. <clears throat> Notice I said these. I recommend buying two <clears throat> and then making them um, almost like a 45, 40, I guess it'll be 90, 45 from you, but almost like uh, a 90 degree angle to you, maybe a little bit sharper. Um, the cool thing about these lights, let me get specific, is that they have these little, a little knob at the bottom, you turn them up and turn it down. I'll give you an example of that. So this is turning it off. See how dark it is, <laughs> right? I was making videos like this. And then you can adjust it. Right? I have darker features, so I have the light super bright. If you have lighter features, then you might want a softer light. It depends on what you're doing, too. This is a coaching, side hustle, business, entrepreneurship channel. So I don't need to do all that. I'm not, like, this is, this might be my first time ever showing products. Aside from, like, one other time, I think about a year ago, I showed some products on my live. Other than that, I don't do that. You know, and I'm talking about, again, the live, not the recorded one, but the live, like I'm doing right now. I've done about 50 of these. And so I don't need to have the perfect light. I just need to be bright enough so that you can see me. And again, I'm brown. So it's like you need that bright light, particularly if you have dark, darker features. Um, it is portable. 
which came in handy when I was traveling about a year ago. So this is the this is the case right here. And um, lastly, I think they're in here. Oh, they are in here. Lastly, they come with different covers. So these, sorry, sorry for all the junky noise. These are, happens to be like, like an orange, like a burnt orange. There's a couple other covers. So I think there's like maybe two or three colors that you can pat, patch on there. And it's really straightforward. Like it's almost like a little Lego set where the circle is made up of quarters and you just snap each one out. Now I'm heavy handed and I haven't broken them yet. So that's good job on newer for making them durable. <laughs> so you can snap them off if you want a certain color. They're white right now, but again, it fit, fits my skin tone for, and you know, what I'm wearing and you know, I, I tend to, I have the white walls, but I tend to have like wood in my office and I tend to lean towards again, the darker colors. So that makes sense to have it super bright. For your office or whatever, that might be fine. These work fine outside too. I did a keynote about a year and a half ago and I actually took these down to my garage and they worked out really well. The, the cord itself is fine. It seems super durable. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. They also are portable. So there's like three or four little latches that you can unscrew or, or more like unsnap. You know what I mean? So it's like a little snap there. You unsnap it, push it down. So you can adjust the height, but you can also adjust the height to, to the point where it's only, I don't know, my guess is about two feet, something like that. And then it collapses a little bit. Same thing for the ring itself. And I believe everything, I haven't traveled with it in about a year, but I think everything fits in here. And this is lightweight, this is durable. Again, I have two of them. I had one of them for exactly one day. <laughs> I put it right in front of me and it was just like, it didn't work. And also, um, I had a, um, a person I connected with um, earlier this year where they had their lights set up right behind them on the camera. And like myself, they're pretty busy as far as doing the virtual work. And they actually hurt and burned. I believe burned was the word that they used, their retinas, because they were staring at this bright light. These lights are bright. That's why I want to keep them over here. I'm already middle aged, I'm already wearing glasses. You know, I work with tech a lot. Yeah, you know, it's like I don't, I don't need more more eye issues. You know what I mean? So, and so anyway, these lights are great. I highly recommend them. None of these are paid sponsorships. Let's let's keep it one hundred. So no one's paying me to do this. This is just frankly the shit that I like. All right. So newer ring lights. I've had them for again about a year and a half. Haven't had to trade them up. My, you know, show hopefully has gotten better. <laughs> My audience has gotten bigger. All those things. I've gotten more on point and I haven't had to change my lights. So that's about as big of a recommendation I can give. All right, the next one I would recommend is the, uh, and actually it's gonna be two in here, but I'll just show you this one. Let's get meta for a second. The Logitech Blue Snowball Ice. This is it right here. Don't worry about this part, I'll explain it in a second. This is separate. It's talking about the big ball here. <laughs> I've used, um, the Snowball Ice Brain for, I think I've had like three of them. Uh, the last one I had broke, but I'm pretty sure it was my fault and or my kids. Something happened, <laughs> let's leave it at that. Again, if you got if you got kids, you, you know the vibes. Um, but let me show it to you again. So here's the Snowball Ice. Um, I like it a lot. You're actually listening to it right now. So if the audio sounds weird, that's why, because I'm getting meta for a second. I like this a lot. It's simple, it's compact. Um, you use USB for this. So I'm talking to you through, I have a, a MacBook Air, right? So part of the, the Mac lines, which is also super portable and all that stuff. Um, it connects to the USB. Now, the newer MacBook Airs, we're gonna inside baseball for a second. The newest MacBook Airs actually have their own, um, it's called the lightning connector. The lightning connector is not directly compatible with USB. So I was able to get a small connector. I'm gonna disconnect you for a second. Okay. See, I, I told you it's going crazy. <laughs> so this is actually a connector that you need to get. If I would have thought about it ahead of time, I would have threw it in the, in the comments. This is a connector that you need to get. The connector to connect it to the newer MacBooks 
fourteen dollars, maybe not that much, not that much. I wasn't upset about it. I was like, okay, but it allows you to connect a USB. If you have an older computer, or if you have a PC, or more traditional computer that not that isn't reliant on, um, I'm gonna connect this back up. There we go. Hopefully, you can hear me. Um, but if you're um, reliant on a computer or something that has a traditional USB connection, it plugs right in. Um, PC or Mac, which, you know, dominant ones, or Chromebook. As soon as it plugs in, your computer, if you go to the um, the property settings, whatever the equivalent is in your computer, I could get detailed, but it's very different for each computer. Whatever the equivalent is of where you get your sound from, and it'll say you're using this device, device for your sound, it should show up. There's no software, no nothing. It was just extremely smooth. Again, this is the Logitech Blue Snowball Ice. I am a fan of it. Um, if you're on Amazon, you'll see the link for it below. It should be highlighted. If you're watching on YouTube or LinkedIn, then the link is literally right there. So you can check it out. Um, all these links are on Amazon. You can also find them at other places too. It just, for most people, they tend to use Amazon. So I, I go and connect it on there. And of course, you're on Amazon Live. You'll see it highlighted on there. Um, it works really well for me. Um, I end up using that again for the, um, the last independent audiobook that I did for the Bill From Now audiobook, again, the book that came out um, about a year and a half ago, Bill From Now, I use it for that. And I was in my closet using this. And I think the results, again, are, are pretty strong. You can go and listen to an excerpt of the audiobook. This is the first chapter right here. And I'll actually have some other um, chapters from the audiobook um, as some surprises later on in the season of uh, the Bring Your Show. Anyway, I'm a big fan of this one. This one, uh, is currently, let me look at the price. Wow, it's even cheaper than when I got it. So right now it's around $50. Fantastic. I think when I copped it, I think it was closer to 100. I want to say it was like 75. Yeah, I think it was close to, it was around 75. So if you're doing the math at home, the um, ring lights, which I'll highlight again on Amazon, the ring lights are just over $100. I got two of those, right? So that's the light you see. And now you can see me. The um, the ice joint, the ice joint, <laughs> the ice joint from Logitech. That's actually available for currently fifty dollars. So it's even cheaper than when I bought it. I think I bought this one again to replace my old one, which broke because it was the fall of my family. I'm positive <laughs> the USB thing broke. Otherwise, they're pretty durable. But again, when you have kids, nothing's safe. This joint is currently fifty dollars. So again, the two ring lights together, you're looking at about $200. This joint's 50 bucks. So right now you can have a really good mic and have your, pardon my French, your shit lit properly for $250, right? Isn't that cool? All right, so that's the Logitech Ice one. Um, on that note, one thing that, that where I go even deeper on this is one of the Monday, Friday episode, one of the recorded episodes I was talking about uh, from a few months ago, talking about three professional audiobook secrets. Um, as I hinted at earlier, I ended up doing Career Remix, my latest book that came out a few months ago. I actually did it as a partnership. So I have my own publishing company, but I did this one as a partnership with, um, with Union Square and Company. Again, shout out to them. And when you work with a major company, they're a subs subsidiary, if I get the word out, a <laughs> subsidiary of Barnes & Noble. So they're like, okay. I was like, I could do some inside baseball. I was like, I was like, you know what? I have an audiobook set up at home. And they're like, nah, nah, we'll get you a studio. Okay. Right. So <laughs> suddenly I was in an episode of Making the Band. And so they found a great studio um, right outside of downtown here in Las Vegas called MGB Music. Shout out to them over there. And uh, I talked about my experience with that and three major secrets I learned from doing a professional audiobook. Keep in mind that all the other audiobooks that I've done, some of them that have become bestsellers, they're done in the various closets <laughs> that I've lived in all across the country. And I've lived in Southern California. I lived in the Midwest for a little while. And now my family settled here in Las Vegas. That was during the course of the eight, it was over the course of six years, I wrote eight, um, eight business books, which are all stacked over here. And you see some of them behind me, behind my big head. <laughs> And all of them were independent until this one. And so I didn't know 
And so, you know, trying to do a Prometheus work, you know, I got in the real studio time and was ended up doing it professionally, professionally, and brought back some secrets. Some of these will save your health. <laughs> I am not exaggerating. This is not clink baby. Like suddenly I was like, why do you not do it like this? I'm like killing myself trying to do these audiobooks. It's like, I didn't have to do that. So all these techniques I talk about in here, it's way more in depth. It's about 20 minutes long. Um, I think it's worth checking out. But Career Remix then it being the result of, of uh, these secrets I learned. And you'll tell, you can tell that Career Remix um, sounds way more professional than Built From Now. But Bill from now sounds a lot better than a lot of the audiobooks that you would hear that were done independently. Hopefully that makes sense to you. All right, so the next one I recommend is called StreamYard Live Streaming. I'm using StreamYard right now, so meta meta moment, but how else are you gonna talk about this? Every, uh, the Bring Your shows every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, Vegas time. About a year and a half ago, when uh, I launched the show, uh, again, take care of my kids. I did two books since I launched the show. So all this stuff's going on. I think I did a TED Talk and I just did a keynote a few months ago. Like it's just been a lot of stuff that's been going on. Happy to be this busy. What's beautiful about this period of time is having a business, but what's hard is having a consistent schedule. So I decided to do it um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And every Wednesday was an optional live show like I'm doing right now. Doing a live show requires a platform, it requires software. Um, StreamYard, actually, I've been working with them uh, pretty much since the beginning. There were a few other ones that I worked with. Shout out to them. But these guys seem to be working the best for me. I think the monthly plan, I wouldn't say the monthly plan is less than $20 and a lot cheaper if you do it annually. And all it does is you go into the website, you log in, you say, I'm going to record at this particular time. And then you can choose three or for the deluxe plans, more platforms you want to live stream to at the same time. So when I first started, I was like, I'm going to try a live stream thing. And you'll see that with one of my very earliest episodes, which is me with my headset on. Of course, I'm in the dark because I don't have my lights right and all that stuff. But it was the very first episode of the Ring Awards show. In fact, I should have thrown a link up here, but I digress. You guys can find it if you go all the way to the back and go to December 17th or December 22nd of 2020. The problem with that is that you can go to LinkedIn Live, which I'm on right now, again, Meta. You can go to YouTube Live, and then Twitter's been funny about it, but for a little while you can do Twitter Live, which was connected to um, Periscope and the other one that they had. It's been a little while, but they've since shut her down. So I kind of have Twitter Live, but it's kind of this murky, murky area. But you can only do one. I mean, and there are videos of folks having like three cameras just so they can be on all platforms at the same time. StreamYard eliminates that. What it says is that, go ahead, go live through our platform. You can see your comments on the right-hand side. So I'm looking at the, my comments right now. The same ones that you're seeing me pop up. And if you have comments and they'll pop up here and I can share them on the screen. We'll show you, <laughs> it's always backwards on the screen, forgive me. Um, we'll show you like how long you've been on, on the air, which I don't know if you can see that. I don't think you can. If I'm on the air, I'm approaching a half an hour. And then there's um, a little image of my new book, which I put up there myself. And right now I'm live streaming on Amazon Live. I'm live streaming on LinkedIn. I'm live streaming on YouTube. If you're watching this, you're watching on one of those three platforms. It's all happening at the same time. That's all I got to do. That's absolutely worth the money for me. So check them out if you're curious about um, having a, um, a live streaming client. Some folks I know just strictly do live stream, which I considered because you're able to be more interactive, especially as people get in and it's more dynamic. This feels more like a keynote than the recorded one. For me though, I wanted to do both. So this is something that I use like every, again, every Wednesday, unless there happens to be a special webinar or something that I'm doing. So check them out, you know, and um, hopefully they're worthwhile for you. Um, if you want more insight into this live process, all my live shows are archived, including some of the early ones. Again, there's some rough stuff in there, so bear with me. But hopefully there's some good content. Um, I think there's about 50 live episodes now. I think it was like the 45th, 46th. So yeah, and each of them are like a half an hour to an hour long. Like I said, I try to stay in that range. So check them out. You'll get some insight. Uh, most of them, again, I end up using StreamYard with them. I think all of them. 
frankly, I do not remember, but you'll be able to see how that works and how that's structured and all that good stuff. All right, more Inside Baseball, InShot Video Editor. I have the link right there. I think it's just InShot.com. I'm pretty sure I got the link right, but you can always Google them. I was using a couple of video editors. I might've even used QuickTime and it was rough. InShot is great for me for, I can think of two really good reasons. First of all, it's, at least for me, it's super intuitive. And you see me move my thumbs. Everything's done on the phone. So I think it's on um, Android and it's definitely on iPhone because I use the iPhone version. So it's, so you can move stuff around. Um, you can have text pop up. Um, you can have outside images. Uh, my theme song is done by Purple Fluoride. Shout out to them. So there's my theme songs playing in the background. It's very straightforward. I just take the music that I got from Purple Fluoride for the Bring Your Worth uh, theme song, send it to my computer, or start send it to my phone. It, and then InShot says, you want to use this as music? I say, yes. I set up the volume. I loop it because it's a four minute song. I loop it if it's a longer episode and that's it. Like me putting in the music every single episode that you see, it takes maybe 30 seconds, probably 20 because I'm getting pretty fast at it. And then, and then it's, and then it's super mobile, which is the second part. So when I'm going to pick up my kids and I'm waiting in line to pick them up, um, sometimes in the car or whatever, um, if I'm traveling, which I've been doing a lot of traveling lately, as I mentioned over the summer, all those different things, I'm able to do it right on my phone. So I love my laptop. I'm a hardcore MacBook Air fan. I don't always want to take this out when I'm on the trip. I just took a flight, um, about three, four days ago, but actually about a week ago now, it's been a long week, <laughs> about a week ago. And I was able to pull out my latest video and the videos that are gonna be premiering, I think, I think the one that premiered last Friday, because again, it's every Monday and Friday for the recorded ones. I think I edited that on the plane, you know what I mean? And it's just super straightforward. Um, and lastly, the price is really good. I think I did, I got the annual plan after doing the monthly for a little while. Again, you don't want to commit too early, but I did the annual plan. And I want to say the annual plan was like 60, maybe 70, no more than 70. I think it's going to re-up soon. But I did the annual plan uh, just under a year ago. And it's great. Like, it's fantastic. In fact, I think y'all should charge more, but that's me being a business coach. <laughs> anyway, fantastic product. Shout out to them. That's what I use. If you're watching the live shows, you're watching StreamYard. But if you're watching anything edited, it's on InShot and at least for the near future, that's going to be in my joint. So I highly recommend them. And I think it's a good place to start. I'm sure it's a more sophisticated stuff. But again, we're trying to keep a beginner, uh, just like myself. Bring your worst show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The playlist is right there. Again, about 250 episodes. Every single episode is edited with InShot. Again, check them out. We have the pop filter from Akio. I can never pronounce them, but I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. So shout out to Akio. I believe they're a Japanese company. Shout out to them. Um, this is called a pop filter. So if you hear it in my language, um, I have a slight lisp. I'm originally from New Jersey, so I talk really fast. I'm always using my hands, so there's blockage there. The pop filter allows, you, allows those P's, those um, S's, those areas where you kind of might slow your words or stumble or have like spittle coming out, it protects it. Now this is a little bit more limited as far as how you can hear it from me because the mic's over here like I was showing you and I'm all the way over here. But when back to the audiobook, when you're in the booth and you're speaking to your audience or you're doing a podcast, not just audiobooks, I don't do podcasts, I appear on them but I don't have one, but the audiobook and the podcast worlds aren't that much different. Excuse me, if you're doing a podcast, same thing. You want to have that intimacy with your audience. And you don't want to, you don't want your audience to feel like you, you know, they're spitting, you're spitting all over them, right? This is excellent. I was, I think I did some audio work where I didn't have it. And then I ended up doing it now where I do have it and it's like night and day. Particularly, again, I have a slight list. I get really excited. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, that's the way that I talk especially when it's stuff like this that I really care about and that I'm passionate about. This helps 500%. Oh, how much is this? Let's see, $12. Again, what are we at, like 270? So for starting a YouTube channel that, or a podcast, but let's talk YouTube with the visual part, 
that could change the course of your career and allow you to connect with people uh, in the same way that I do on a more intimate level. 270 is not that bad at all. Not saying it's peanuts, but again, um, when I got into the game a couple years ago, I was watching, you know, really professional YouTubers. Like that was their job. This is not my job, right? But this is their job. And they're like, yeah, drop like five Gs for this filter. And I'm like, nah, no, I can't. I can't do that. Financially, I don't want to stretch that much. I could figure that out, but it's like, I don't want to do that. And number two, it's like, this is part of something bigger or something else. And if you're in the same boat that I am, or you're not sure if this is a direction for you, just, you know, invest a couple hundred dollars. If you can figure that out, then you get some decent equipment. But again, in a matter of way, you can see this is what I'm using. Uh, the Career Remix audiobook preview. You can listen to the audiobook that, again, I recorded downtown um, at MGB Music and get an idea as far as the sounds and the feel and all that stuff and uh, what I'm working with. And it is 35 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up with this last one. <laughs> it's an exciting topic and I'm, I love kind of pulling the curtain for y'all. My main goal is to, you know, create stuff to go on journeys and then to bring it back to y'all and say, these these are the pitfalls, these are the maps. There be dragons, don't go that way. This, this is the way that, that might get you where you need to go. All the stuff that I have might not apply to you, but the stuff that does, I hope it really, it really uh, hits you hard in a good way. The last one, I was looking for an example of this, but I think the extra ones might be in my garage as we speak. You know, always trying to make sure I have space again for the kids. So it's uh, S-D-S-O-D-O-C-T, say that 15 times. Egg Crate Acoustic Foam Panels. Joint comes in a 12 pack. It is currently $22. I think I might've paid a little bit less for that. Again, I think we just hit $300. Just hit $300, no whammies, right? These are the joints that are, again, foot by foot, right? Because 12 inches by 12 inches, about an inch thick, a little bit more than an inch thick. And um, I had myself and, and my sons, you know, the young guys, but they were able to help me out. We pasted them all around the little closet that I have over here. And Nat was able to create absorption, um, allow, um, I've talked to audiobook folks and I forget the terms that they use. When you're using these so-called egg crates, because they're called egg crates because back in the day when uh, you wanted to make a soundproof a room, but you didn't have fancy stuff, you didn't have Amazon, <laughs> stuff like that, you would take um, the egg crates, cut them in half so the top and the bottom, and then paste them against the wall and they actually absorb the sound. The limitation with this, which is, a, again, I learned this from a, um, uh, essentially an audio engineer, one of the folks that, was, uh, that I've met on my journeys. The challenge with this is that it will help sound from escaping, which means that if you're speaking in the closet, your sound won't bounce all over the place. So it'll sound like you're speaking directly to the audience, which is what you want. Again, with uh, Logitech Ice, with the echo um, pop filter, all that stuff. You want to talk like this. You can probably hear me, right? You want to talk like this. The challenge is that it won't actually help you as far as other sounds coming into the room. So you're soundproofing for what's coming out of your mouth, but it's not going to protect you from what's going on in your house. I have my wife. I have a nine-year-old and I have a six-year-old. That makes it really hard <laughs> to have a moment of silence, especially when everybody's not, everyone's at home. No one happens to be home at this moment, so that's why it's like, uh, yeah, this is not indicative of what my house sounds like. It sounds, turn up the decibels, about 200. So that's one of the limitations. I want to be clear about that, where this will not soundproof the rest of the world from your recording. If there's, there was construction going on in, in my neighborhood earlier today, if there's beeping outside, it's gonna come in there if you use these. But the sound of your voice will be 500% more stronger and it'll help contain whatever sounds were actually in the booth or closet, virtual booth that you're speaking in. Just wanna be clear about that. 
I didn't, again, I learned this from an audio engineer. He knew what the heck he was talking about. So I want to pass it on to you. That's a gem, right? I, again, a gem to me, it might not matter to you. But if you have a loud household, this will not protect you from that. I don't know what would, to be honest, because I talk to engineers about it. If you got a loud house, you might need to get up super early or stay up late at night. Most of the folks that I know, my colleagues, my friends, people who are way on another pay grade, quite literally in some cases, as far as doing their audiobooks, their podcasts, or YouTubes, they're like, yeah, I do it at night. Like, <laughs> or I get up super early in the morning, or I go and I rent this office, I do it in the closet over there. This will not protect that. But what it will do is make the sound of your voice so much stronger. Trust me on this. Powerful stuff, especially for 22 bucks. So anyway, I'm actually over the time that I wanted to spend with you. So I try to follow my commitment. We'll call it 45 minutes and call it a day. Anyway, I hope this gave you some good insight as far as um, as far as getting your basic YouTube stuff off the ground. Um, why don't we go and do it from the top, just so for y'all that might have came in later. Um, for the YouTube channel, bring your worth. Again, it's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, hitting 250 episodes. And the equipment that I use is the newer ring lights. I suggest two of those because they're dope, they are affordable. Each one's like $100, which for a light of this stature is a steal. I am very, very money conscious, cost conscious, I should say. So, you know, you can trust me on that one. Uh, the Logitech um, Blue Snowball Ice. Again, get meta for a second. And while we have this up, the Aco, um sorry, trying to do this with my left hand. The Aco Pop Filter which right here stops your peas from popping. <laughs> right, I guess you wanna push peas, but not, not pop peas, right? And then um, lastly, it's the uh, the 12 pack of the Egg Crate Acoustic Foam Panels. I looked at a lot of them. I might've bought one or two other ones and they didn't work as well. These are actually my favorite and they're super affordable. So shout out to them. Um, and as far as how to get software going, I'm using StreamYard Live Streaming. I'm using it right now. Highly recommend them. You can use the link below to check it out. I think there's actually a discount. I think you get $10, I think, if I remember correctly, if you end up using that link, but don't quote me on that. Just check it out and see, see what's going on. Please don't come back to me and say you didn't get $10. <laughs> and then finally, InShot Video Editor. StreamYard is for live streaming. Let me backtrack for a second. If you're late to the conversation, StreamYard is for live streaming. So the live shows I do on most Wednesdays for the Bring Your Worst show. It allows you to cheaply go to multiple platforms at once. So I'm talking to you in my computer through StreamYard, but it's going to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. It's going to my LinkedIn and LinkedIn Live. Shout out to y'all. And lastly, it's going to Amazon Live. Shout out to y'all over there. At the same time, I don't need to do anything fancy. I just need to point in the right direction and get on the air. So the lovely, lovely software. InShot Video Editor is for your mobile phone, uh, iPhone or Android. It allows you to edit videos on your phone. Every single video from the Bring Your Worst show, again, 250 or so episodes. Um, all the recorded videos, not the live ones that you're seeing here, but the recorded ones, the ones that look like they're edited, they're all edited through InShot. I'm a big fan of this, shout out to them. And both InShot and StreamYard are super affordable. Again, that's my main focus. All the equipment I talked about right here, $300 or less. I think it's even cheaper now, like I mentioned, than when I got a year and a half ago when I started this show. Again, it's the Bring Your Worst show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I guess I'll be seeing you on one of these platforms that I'll be talking about and you understand how the sausage is made. And again, my new book is Career Remix. Get the gig you want based on the skills you got. Available on all platforms, all audiobooks. And of course, you can go and check out the YouTube channel to find out how this audiobook is made. Good luck, and I hope to see you somewhere in the YouTube universe or listen to your podcast, or listen to your audiobook. Until next time, remember you can always bring your worth, and they can always go from there. Best Emotional Intelligence EQ Books Out Now. Question I get a lot, which is why some recent videos have addressed this. It's like, Damon, what the hell is emotional intelligence? Now, it's been a much of a, uh, so much of a buzzword, like we need to have more of it. 
it impacts us more than IQ or their intellectual quotient or our intellect. You know, it, it keeps us uh, sharp. It allows us to negotiate better. It makes us better partners, whether it's a romantic partner or a business partner. It makes us better parents. It makes us better leaders, blah, blah, blah. You've been hearing all this probably in Fast Company or in my column in a magazine that I've had for several years. But what exactly is it? So I'm going to recommend some books that will help get you up to speed. And I'm also going to recommend some videos as well as give some definitions to help you get to the next level. Um, if you've coached with me, I'm, I'm a business coach as well. You can check me out at DamonBrown.net or you'll learn more about that through the YouTube channel. If you've coached with me or you're familiar with my work, you know that emotional intelligence is a pillar in that. I feel like that without emotional intelligence, you're capping yourself. Not in the matter version of, of cap as the kids say today, <laughs> like not exaggerating yourself, but like a limitation, a ceiling. Without the emotional intelligence, you're not gonna get there. You can get intellect a lot. You can read a bunch of books, ironically enough, to sharpen your intellect. But if you don't know how to interact with other people and deal with your own emotions, you're not gonna make it. Particularly in this world. Um, I can't speak for your generation. I know for mine, I'm in that transitional generation where when business first started and I first got into the world, again, around the time of grad school, man, it was like, it was still a little bit of an old boys network, as my, my forefathers and mothers would say. Then it started shifting to, I actually expect more from the people that I work with. I'm not gonna take a job just because they pay me a, you know, a bunch of money. I'm also going to want that job to reflect who I am, the values that, 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 um, that I care about, and that I'm doing better for the world. That requires a level of emotional intelligence because you have to know what your value is. So enough beating around the bush. What exactly is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is recognizing, understanding, and managing our emotions while simultaneously recognizing, understanding, and influencing the emotions of others. So recognizing, understanding, and managing our own emotions while recognizing, understanding, and influencing the emotions of others. Now, my interpretation of influencing isn't that you try to make people feel a certain way, but it's more like you understand where they're coming from. Well, we can break it down. You recognize where they're coming from. You understand as much as possible where they're coming from. And then you're able to explain to them what your point of view is. And perhaps influence becomes having a positive outcome. And it could be me <laughs> talking with my kids, which my two kids were fighting this morning. So I had to use some type of emotional intelligence with them because I felt like saying, y'all need to be quiet. And, but that wasn't quite enough because they were having some issues and I had to help them sort it out. That required a level of emotional intelligence, even though it was super early in the morning and I didn't feel like dealing with that. Same thing with a business partner, or romantic partner. There's a level that you have to not necessarily stay cool, but be semi, at least semi-objective about how you feel, to be articulate enough, which means being calm enough to say what the heck you're feeling, and then to be receptive to whatever the other people in your in your world, the situation, the organization, the, the kids, what they're saying, and respect their POV. That's hard. Again, I just went through that this morning, like a few hours ago. It's early over here on the West Coast. So I just went through that at this point. And that's the process. That's what you sign up for. But if you want to be a good parent, if you want to be a good leader, if you want to be a good partner, then you need to work on this. And so it's key to understand what it means. And then next to understand how you can elevate yours. And as I talk about in some of the videos I'm going to recommend, it's a lifelong process. As I say in one of the videos, I teach this, I help my coach, my help my coaching clients get there, and so I struggle with it, as my wife can attest. One good place to start if you want to learn more about emotional intelligence is to check out my playlist. I've been talking about emotional intelligence on the show for literally two years. We're approaching two years in like a few weeks, as I just said. There's a whole playlist dedicated to emotional intelligence. We have uh, Brene Brown, who, as many of y'all know, is really into emotional intelligence, particularly the darker emotions that we don't want to deal with. She's created tools to help us deal with that. I talk about her on there. Um, I talk about Oprah. Um, I talk about uh, Adam Grant. Shout out to Adam with his wonderful books. I talk about a lot of folks who are creating content 
who are discussing emotional intelligence in a way that works for us. And this playlist includes most of the videos I talk about that I'm gonna talk about for the rest of the show. It also includes some interesting content that I think you're not gonna find many other places. Again, I go to TED every year. I've had my own best-selling books. Luckily, I've been fortunate enough to be in the room with some of these people and talk with a lot of the people, including Brene Brown, in person and or online directly one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm trying to take that insight and share it with y'all from the interviews with Inc. Magazine, from the books, et cetera, from being in the room at TED. Hopefully that'll help you get to the next level. This will be a really good place to start. So if books are too much for you, which is okay, no judgment from me. Sometimes books are too much for me too. Check out the playlist. That'll give you quick insight. Um, the average video on there is like five, maybe 10 minutes. So if you got five or 10 minutes and you're hanging out with me, you can hang out with the videos. I wanna say there's about a dozen videos on the playlist, maybe a little bit more. And a lot of them, again, are these recent videos that I talked about here. So I have a new video coming out on Friday that's gonna be talking about EQ, and it's Become Self-Aware, How to Know Your Achilles Heel, Use This Simple Exercise. And it's about something called the Jahari Window. Now, the Jahari Window is this really simple psychological tool that will allow you to understand yourself better. If you understand yourself better and how you show up to other people, as they say in the, in the different worlds, in the different psychological and sociological worlds, then you're able to better regulate and understand your own emotions and your own strengths with that. Like that's such an important thing to understand. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and actually use a different type of tech tool. So hopefully this will work. So <laughs> stay with me. So the first book that I'm going to recommend is Emotional Intelligence by, um, by Daniel Goleman. Let's see if we can get it going. Uh, is it working? No, unfortunately, the the app that I was going to use isn't going to work, but it might work for the next one. Daniel Goldman is, as we say, the OG, the original gangster of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence was actually began to be discussed back in the 50s. I want to say, I want to say 1955. You can correct me in the comments. We're around 1955, so well before I was around. And it was researchers realizing that your emotional quotient was actually there. And I would argue that before that, people didn't really know where they're like, all right, well, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think you have, I think emotions are important, but it's like, maybe, <laughs> like maybe emotions are important, but if you're really smart, then you should be able to go into any room. And, you know, I spent time in Silicon Valley. I minored in engineering. We called it computing at the, um, at Oakland University, shout out to the Grizzlies that I went to for undergrad. So I understand the engineering world and the technology world. And I, when I was younger, I learned several different programming languages. For some folks, that's enough to say, okay, you're a genius, you're smart, come through. And particularly with Silicon Valley, remember I was there probably 2008 to 2011. So I was there during the heyday of that, where it's like, yes, you're smart. Here's a quarter million dollars. Let's create the next Facebook or create Facebook, actually, if you really think about that time period. Um, and that was the 1950s. And then suddenly you had, wait a second, your emotions and how you deal with them matter? And you can be a genius, but if you have a temper tantrum, everyone, someone gives you, every time someone tells you that you're incorrect in your answer, you throw a telephone across the floor. I'm not making up stuff. <laughs> These are real stories. Either I've experienced, man, I got some stories either experience things I've experienced or that other people that I've mentored or who have mentored me have told me about. Geniuses that cannot get their stuff together. That discussion wasn't really happening in the 50s. It was just like, oh, you're smart. You're aggressive. Cause you know, it was like the madman period. You're aggressive, come on through. This shifted that. This is the beginning of a shift. Maybe people weren't ready to hear that, but it came out. Goldman, which I want to say mid 90s, again, you can correct me in the comments, excuse me, <clears throat> but, but his book was brought it to the masses and said, emotional intelligence is actually quantifiable. It is quantifiable. Here's emotional intelligence is what it means. So it took three, four decades, something like that. So it came out in the eighties. 
I'm guessing again, mid nineties, blew the hinges off of everything. And my mentors, you know who you are. Thank you for watching, watch, watching, <laughs> listening, and supporting me all over the years. Like I was schooled on this book and learned about this book when I was, I don't know, before grad school. We'll leave it at that. So learning about this is really important. This is the first book that actually tackled it. It's been a bestseller for a gazillion years for a reason. There's a 2.0 version of it, which I think is by his son. I might be able to be, please correct me in the comments again. Excuse me if I'm wrong with that, but there's a 2.0 version. This is an OG version, highly recommend it. You know, even if you just skim it or look at the beginning or, you know, get the highlights of it, you want it on your shelf if you want to understand EQ. Actually, I have a video that I did recently about how is EQ different than IQ, similar to the definition I just gave, except it's much deeper. This will be, again, a good place to start. If you end up going back to the Better Emotional Intelligence playlist, this is the beginning of the playlist. So if you want to mess with the user channel and you want to learn more about this, just click on the link there. It's right here. It'll be below if you're watching this on a, on any of the major channels. Um, click on that, and then it begins with uh, with how is EQ different EQ different than IQ, and I break it down. And yeah, hopefully that'll help you get to the next level. But be sure and check out J Daniel Goldman's book. You probably get it grab it use. Heck, maybe one of your mentors, somebody somebody that's an, an OG to you, already has it on their shelf. Like it's that kind of book. It's a cornerstone, as we say. The next book I would recommend. Oh, we're gonna. Uh, oh, I tried it. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> I had all kinds of fancy stuff planned for y'all today, but it's not working. It's okay. Technology wants to keep it simple. We actually have Rising Strong by Brene Brown. I have a ton of Brene Brown really good content on my website. It's some of my most popular videos. So I know y'all love discussing her and her work. Quick summary, Brene Brown talks about, um, about guilt and shame. Doesn't sound like fun, but they're the cornerstone, again, cornerstone of EQ. Because if you feel guilty about something, which means like you feel like you should be doing something, but you're not, that might come across in how you show up to other people. If you feel shame, but shame is that you feel like you're being judged. Not that you are being judged, but you feel like you're being judged based on what you're doing or not doing, then that's absolutely gonna come across and how you interact with other people. Um, I remember I had an interaction with someone over the last couple of weeks and it was, <laughs> I wouldn't say it was negative, but they were throwing a lot of stuff at me and it took a little while for me to be patient and to cut through that. And come to find out there was these, this bundle, almost like this, you think of nerves, nerves are just bundles, right? Nerves are just bundles. But imagine those bundles all tied up. And nerves are sensitive. And it might come off as anger, it might come off as condescension, it might come off as arrogance. And then as we, as we talk more, then it started to unbundle and end up being tied up in all these insecurities based on whatever they felt as though they should have been doing or they weren't doing, whatever. That was, as my mentors say, that was their stuff. That wasn't my stuff. And luckily I knew myself well enough and I'm, you know, I love the work that I do as a coach and we're helping people get through whatever they need to get through is that I was able to stay steadfast. But that's what I mean by why guilt and shame and other those powerful in some cases nasty emotions what we call nasty it's important for us to recognize what they are i feel guilt and shame right now based on things that i should be doing or shouldn't be doing but because i recognize those things number one i can be motivated to do something about it which isn't at the point but i also can move forward as far as knowing when those emotions come up when i'm triggered by the actions of others or in certain situations. And sometimes I'll just have to, take, have to take a breath and be like, wow, I'm ready to like lash out or be angry about this, whatever. But this has nothing to do with them. This has nothing to do with the situation. This is just my stuff. And sometimes it's just your stuff. And that's okay. 
That's what Brene Brown specializes in. <laughs> That's why I can summarize it. Again, I have like about 20 videos connected to Brene Brown's work on the YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe and you can, you can hear all about it. This is my favorite book of hers. I have not the, read the most recent book, Atlas of the Hearts. Like I said, I can relate to y'all who are overwhelmed by books right now. I have so much stuff going on and there's a lot going on on a macro level, as economists say, especially like the last few days, there's been a lot going on. So I have not been diving into books as much as I usually do. So I've not read Atlas of the Heart. I heard it's amazing, but I've read all our previous books. This is the one for me. This is the one I always come back to. It is about when you fall down emotionally, when you have an awful argument with your partner, when um, you're disgraced, disgraced at work, when you make a business decision and you fail. I don't like to use the word fail, but sometimes we do. <laughs> sometimes we can call it a failure. What? And then in retrospect, we see we, we survived that failure and then we're back up. To use Brene Brown's words, what happens between us falling on our ass and us showing up in the arena again? That doesn't mean becoming a success. That means getting back in the game. What happens between those two things? I've had, wow, I'd say in the last five years. Yeah, I think it ends up being about one, maybe equivalent of one, maybe two rising strong moments over the past, per year over the past five years. So in the past five years or so, which has been a turbulent, exciting, intense five years for me, career-wise and otherwise. Um, yeah, and it's like, so how how did I get back up? What is the process? Is there not a system, but what goes through someone's mind, someone's heart as they rise strong again? What happens? Uh, she, you know, the main quote is from Teddy Roosevelt. It's like, who's the, forgive me, because it's he's a man of his time, so he only says man. But, but it's not the people in the cheap seat, seat, seats, but it's the man in the arena. When you get your ass kicked, your ass handed to you, whatever term you wanna use. And then you need to get back in the arena. This is the blueprint for that. And as, as you can tell, this speaks very, very much to my heart. In fact, it made me a big Brene Brown fan. Um, I saw her speak at TED which was a privilege, privilege in itself because not, not everybody knew her like that. It was about 10 years ago, 12 years ago now. Nobody knew her like that. And I was like, who the hell is this? And then about a year later, she blew up. So I was privileged to be there. But this book made me a fan. So I highly recommend this book if you're looking into emotional intelligence at all. This video is my most popular video on the Brain Work channel. I got about 270 videos. This is the most popular one next to the TED talk that I did. Um, now about 10 years ago, I did the TED talk. Um, and y'all like sharing that, which I appreciate. As far as episodic content, this is by far my most popular episode. How can I accept others for who they are? It's seven minutes long. It's straight from Brene Brown. And I'm talking about my favorite passage from, I believe, Rising Strong. And it comes down to that. Emotional intelligence is this. How can I accept others for who they are? And I would add a little addendum to that. How can I accept myself for who I am? I can have some jacked up emotions and I can have a temper and I could be absolutely unreasonable. Even though I seem like a reasonable person, I can be absolutely unreasonable. As I get older, as I get more mature, I'm accepting that part of myself more. The less I accept that part of myself, the more I'm not in control <laughs> of that part of myself. This talks about that. Please, please watch it. If there's anything that you watch in all this, please watch it. It's also, again, part of the Emotional Intelligence playlist. I think it's episode number three or four on the playlist. I'll throw it back up there for y'all. Um, there it is. The Emotional Intelligence playlist. All stuff I'm talking about is on there. Be sure and check it out and you just press play and uh, hopefully get some game. But favorite book of hers by one of my favorite authors. And you are telling me this is your favorite episode of the show over the past two years. 
be sure to check out both. The next one is, I'm gonna try the fancy thing one more time. Hey, it worked. There we go. Yay to me. <laughs> so EQ applied. Thank you, Justin, by Justin Bariso. Um, Justin and I have been colleagues over at Inc. I think he's had a column longer than I have. I've had my column for like six years. I think he's had his column for like 10, some insane amount. And he's doing his thing. He came out with a book a few years ago called EQ Applied. The reason why I like this book, oh, I have the physical version. I'm so used to having digital. I have a physical version. Again, shout out to Justin. Got it a little while ago. As you can tell, there's some, some bends going on, which is always a good sign as far as my reading material. But thin book, relatively thin. I recommend this book because it's an excellent like starter kit. Like you have Emotional Intelligence by uh, Daniel Goleman. And that's talking about it from, uh, I believe he's a researcher, from a researcher standpoint. And then you have Rising Strong, which I have like three copies of it, but I don't, of course I don't have any here. I don't think I've ever had a physical copy. But with Brene Brown's book, she's also a researcher. Shout out to the University of Texas at Austin. I believe that's where she's based. She's a researcher, so she's going deep. As you can tell, I can talk about this stuff all day. I like going deep with stuff. That's one of the reasons why I'm a business coach and love coach, coaching y'all. Justin's is like a primer. And that's one of the reasons why I like it so much, where it's just, you don't know anything about emotional intelligence. Like, you don't know. You don't know how to spell EQ. Here you go. You got it. You got your basics covered. And I think there's something beautiful in it, and there's a place for that. Um, a handful of years ago, I did a book called um, The Bites of the Entrepreneur, which this is the updated version, the deluxe version, with all the, the books in the trilogy, as you can read. But I did a book called The Bites of the Entrepreneur, and it had a, um, and y'all made it a bestseller. And it was similar in that it wasn't talking about these complicated entrepreneurship concepts. It was just me talking about, in 21 very short chapters, talking about what got me from here to there as far as getting a cuddler acquired while I was a primary caregiver of my then one to two year old. And taking the insight I got from the folks you know, talking at TED, again, Brene Brown's in there. Um, awesome authors that I got to know later, like Stephen Pressfield, shout out to Stephen, all these different folks. And that ended up connecting with y'all a lot. Because for a lot of us, we didn't necessarily want to get a book that was like, you know, um, I'm thinking of like 20 different books, you know, that are really popular right now. You just go to Amazon, you check it out. It's like the most popular business books on entrepreneurship and you'll see them on there. A lot of folks that were in the same circles as, as me, where I was in their same circles. I was in Silicon Valley 15 years ago when they were, they were kind of cutting their teeth. But you don't necessarily always want the deep dive. You want something where it's like, all right, I'm a new entrepreneur. What the heck am I going to do? This is the same energy. It's like, all right, I don't know what EQ means, right? Exactly. From heady to practical. Thank you. You're articulating it better than I can. You know? And so it's like, I don't know anything about emotional intelligence. So where do I start? This will be a great place to start. Now, if you know a little bit about emotional intelligence, then go straight to Daniel Goleman or even straight to Brene Brown might work for you. If you're like, oh, Damon, there's a lot going on here. EQ Applied is a spot. Shout out to Justin. I wish you all the success with the book. It's been out for a year or two. I think it's doing well. So shout out to you. I hope you're doing well as well. Um, and again, the, the a great um, aperitif. <laughs> aperitif or I don't know, dessert. If you want to eat it before or after, who cares? A great pairing with this would, again, be an emotional intelligence playlist. Be sure to check that out. <laughs> Another one I would recommend. Sorry, I'm cracking myself up today. Another one I would recommend. Oh, cool. The logos are working. Another one I'd recommend is Sparks by Jonathan Fields. Shout out Jonathan. Hope you're doing wonderful. His book came out probably about a year ago, year and a half ago. I think it was early last year. His book is fascinating, where it reminds me a lot of my book, Built From Now, where he has his own um, man, his own tool to help you understand how you appear in the world and how you function in your inner world as well. At least that's the way I interpret it. Um, Jonathan Fields is a longtime business coach. 
he's had a podcast called the good life podcast for wow i remember hearing about him before podcasts were even popular um he's been doing that he's a former lawyer he's a former yoga instructor like just like a fascinating life and when i got a chance to talk with him and i'll be sure and put up the interview in a second um when i had a chance to talk with him um after listening to and watching and stuff for all the years you can see the blend of all the different dis- disciplines and i think that's so important to to understand and recognize before i get into spark it's also important to understand jonathan where one of the things i talk about with my coaching clients a lot of y'all that come to me that are trying to figure things out it's because you're making a pivot from one profession to another or you're trying to take your career to the next level you're trying you're in a transition that's what i'm trying to say you want you want more you want different and the first thing that i always try to share whether it's the tools that i give or the conversations that we have is that there's never a wasted moment so my time that i spent um working as an astrologist and that's how i made a living for a short period of time because i was writing horoscopes for some of the major websites that you've probably heard of when i was beginning as a freelance journalist that was the main way that i made a living and that's how i was able to pay my rent over in chicago understanding psychology understanding the the motions of things understanding that everything has a season a lot of that energy is similar to astrology or to writing horoscopes so there's a period of time that this fits and you're not going to go in this direction when the wind is going that way this helped me be a better parent this helped me be a better partner this helped me be a better hopefully coach <laughs> so i'm helping y'all understand the seasons of your life and you don't go left when the wind is going right instead you find a gentle way to build things to where you do need to go as my last or my previous my book for last talks about how you build from now i love jonathan's work because he's pulling on all those different things nothing is wasted you can tell it in his writing you can tell it in his conversations um with the interview the two part interview i had with him again i'll give a link in a second you can see the thoughtfulness in that but that comes from those x amount of years of experience as a yoga instructor and as a leader as a lawyer etc all that stuff comes together into this one person sparks is a reflection of that where it ends up being that all the parts that you have all your experience even the shitty ones actually add up to be you and some of that wisdom that you take for granted right now you wouldn't have got it without going through some of that mud or some of the other challenges his tool like you call an assessment tool breaks people down into two different types of energies and i call them energies but but type kind of uh, archetypes might be better he's the word energy a lot but archetypes and based on those archetypes then you show up, see how you show up in the world and again in my words words how your inner world shows up as well so how you show up in the world and how you feel about yourself and how you process things inside fascinating book really cool i i got my two archetypes they were on the money there was a little bit scary <laughs> and the quiz itself it's i think it's free it was free when it when the book launched a year and a half ago or so i think it's still free um the link is going to be in the, in the next day i'm going to show you and um i think the quiz took me like 15 minutes you know so it's worth your time uh to learn more about Jonathan be sure and check out part 1 of our two part interview both parts are in there but there's just a link to i believe the first part of the interview satisfaction spectrum Jonathan Field spark type so he talks about something called the satisfaction spectrum which has to do with with as a business coach i love this part and you can see us getting into it in a good way as far as talking about the satisfaction spectrum as far as as it says the satisfaction you get from the work that you do that doesn't mean money that doesn't mean um like clout as as folks say nowadays or getting your ego stroked and being proud has to do with satisfaction of the work that you do not based on recognition or money or resources it's like no this is my jam <laughs> right this is what i do i would back to that old adage i would do this for free you're not going to do it for free i can't say that as a coach don't do it for free but you would do it for free and we talk about the spectrum and it's about a 10 minute conversation as part of it maybe 15 definitely check it out if you want to learn more about Jonathan and please check out his book it's fascinating book excuse me the last book i would recommend 
One of my favorites is Sinan Hans, No Mud, No Lotus. If you've been a regular watcher of the show, you know I'm a big fan of this book. Tiniest book in the world reminds me of some of my earlier books. And it is a banger. Every, I was going to say every other page. No, every other page, every page is like fire. Fantastic book. The concept behind the book, really simple. According to, according to him, as well as other folks that are familiar with the lotus plant, lotus plants, which are those beautiful plants, um, we talk about the lotus position in yoga, or I'm more familiar with Buddhism, in Buddhism where you're just sitting with your legs crossed and your, your hands open, that's the lotus. The lotus plant looks like that, where it's the, uh, you've seen pictures of it online probably, where it's greenish tint and it's flowing out. But if you look carefully at the pictures of it, unless it's heavily photoshopped, it's sitting like in mud or some mucky water. That's where the lotus plant grows, or lotus flower grows. No mud, which means the nasty stuff. No lotus, which means the stuff that we like, the beauty. Without the rough stuff, there is no beauty. It's a yin and yang, right? Negative, positive, all those things are connected. Thin Nan Han is actually one of the people that schooled Martin Luther King Jr. MLK Jr. came to him while he was working on the civil rights movement and uh, the things that were going on in Selma and so forth. That whole era in the 50s and 60s, he went over there, connected with Thin Nan Han who originally from Tibet became refugee, same period of time as um, as the Dalai Lama. I think he might actually have been older than the Dalai Lama. Same era where, you know, he ended up being exiled and he gave him game, as we say. And, and um, Martin Luther King Jr. came back here <laughs> and started the peaceful protest. Like, so he's the, the OG, my favorite word today, He's the OG of some of those things that really influenced directly as an African-American and directly influenced my life. So it's humbling to see his work directly, which is fantastic. He talks about all those beautiful experiences and all those rough experiences, even talking about when um, the exile was happening. And um, actually, I'm sorry, when, um, when exile, similar exile was happening in Vietnam during the Vietnam War uh, back in the 70s, before, pretty much before my time. And there's this wonderful passage about them accepting that the war could continue and also accepting that the war would eventually end. And him sharing with folks as far as not creating false hope. I think it might've been 1968 or 69 when he was talking to folks. So think about the Vietnam War continued for a handful of years later. So not, I think that's where the EQ and emotional intelligence really starts to come in because it's you being realistic about your expectations. You're not creating false hope based on these emotional needs that you have, but you can't create emotional, you can't bypass that, um, those false hopes you can't have a clear view as far as your future or even a clear view of your present. Let's keep it real. You can't even be aware fully of where you are in your life right now, the circumstances, what people are doing, the, the situations. If you don't have a clear view of your inner world and your emotional inner workings, you can't do that. That passage about Vietnam and other passages speak so clearly to me as far as the importance of knowing where you are emotionally. If you don't know where you are emotionally, then you're not gonna make it. Thank you. Because if you don't know where you're emotionally, then you're not gonna make it. Because as you go through challenges, and I talk about this in the, again, the emotional intelligence playlist in a lot of those videos. The thing is, is that even if you're able to find a semblance of balance among that emotional chaos that you might be feeling, Life isn't static and it's not in a vacuum. And so then there's gonna be new challenges that are gonna come up. There's gonna be things which 
almost feel like the universe does this on purpose. There are going to be things that touch those sensitive points that you're not dealing with. There's going to be new situations that you're going to be in. There's going to be new situations that the people that you love are going to be in. There's new situations that your career is going to be in and the people that you work for or work with, people that are working for you, the whole nine. In other words, things are going to to continually evolve. So the stuff that you're not dealing with, as far as emotional intelligence, the EQ that you're, the stuff you don't want to touch because it's too touchy feeling and you don't want to deal with it, it always rises up. I've been around just long enough. I'm not old, but I've been around just long enough to see things come back around. And whether it's my coaching clients, whether it's myself, I'm not pointing fingers, my own stuff, whether it's stuff with my partner, stuff with my kids, stuff with people that I love, stuff with people that I'm just seeing from a distance. Those emotions don't go away. And so the higher you can get your emotional intelligence up, the more you can be ready to deal with those emotions, past, present, and future. So it's not just a matter of, I wanna be psychologically more healthy. It's also, you're doing this for your career, which is one of the reasons why I'm emphasizing emotional intelligence so much. In the research that was done back in the 50s, one of the things that didn't seem to be discussed as much is it seemed more emphasis seemed to emphasize more how emotional intelligence can help you connect with other people and get up higher in your particular career and in the world. What's being discussed now more, and what I want to share with you, is that emotional intelligence is also part of our health. And if there's a big ambition you have, and there's a big, fat, hairy idea that you want to execute, your equivalent of a moonshot, as we used to say back in the day, and your emotions are all jacked up, they will come out on your way up. And so you can either deal with them now and get into the healthy process, or unfortunately deal with them later, and by then, Frankly, it could be too late. I think it's that important. Ted Nan Han's book is fantastic. It's a tiny book. The stuff I just said, he says it, but way, way more eloquently. <laughs> and he he was literally in the arena, had been on battlefields and all that stuff as a Buddhist monk. And uh, he just passed away, I want to say in April. And when he passed away, I ended up doing um, a show dedicated to him. I highlight my favorite quote from him. And I say that on purpose, Sid Nan Han's best quote for right now. He did this book, I don't know, 20 years ago, maybe. I just learned about it a few years ago, so I was late to the party. This book came out a decade or two ago, at least. It's relevant right now. He didn't know the pandemic was happening until obviously much later in his life. Uh, he didn't know we'd have all the political unrest, particularly here in America. Um, he didn't know we'd be uh, dealing with potential war, actually going through war. Shout out to Ukraine, going through war right now. He didn't know all this macro stuff, as they say, would be happening. But the quote that he had fits right now. If you want to do the work that fits right now, if you want to create things that stand a test of time, to full, bring it full circle, you got to work on the EQ. Because if you're all tied up, again, like I talked about, those nerves are all tied up. You can't see straight. How are you gonna impact the world? You got your own garbage to deal with, right? Again, I am not clean. (laughs) I got my own issues. Again, as my partner and my loved ones can attest to. And at the same time, I know I'm doing my very best to raise my EQ to the point where I can serve you, you, the very best way that I can. And yes, the Stockdale paradox, be able to look under the rock. If you're not looking under the rock, that doesn't make it disappear. It just doesn't. So from the top, recommended books. Let's see if I can can read my own handwriting here. (laughs) All right, Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman. The OG of this um, fascinating book and just have it on your shelf and pull on it as you need it. Rising Strong, my favorite book from, 
I would say my favorite author right now. And she gets deep. So if you're ready to go deep, it's a good place to start. Very approachable writing, but she's kind of like me. She just kind of gets to the point. If you're ready to have that deep conversation, Renee Brown's that person. EQ Applied by Justin Bariso. Shout out to Justin. Um, a really good starter kit, as we used to say back in the day. As far as if you want to learn more about EQ. Sparked by Jonathan Fields. Well, I got all these books up here. I'm not even showing them. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> EQ Q Applied, as well as Sparked by Jonathan Fields. A good way to understand your, your inner workings. And he has a great quiz on there that I think is really good. And lastly, No Mud, No Lotus by Thin Nan Han, the late Thin Nan Han, rest in peace wherever you are. He passed away in April, Buddhist monk, fantastic book. It doesn't leave my shelf like it's here. This is this is actually my partner's copy, my wife's copy. She hasn't even got it back yet. I've held it on this for like five years. Sorry, but it's fantastic. I need to get my own copy. <laughs> I think I actually do have another copy around. But I don't know where it is. Hers is more accessible. It's right here. Don't leave home without it. Fantastic book. Again, <laughs> to go back to the top. If you missed the top, my new book is Career Remix, Get the Gig You Want, based on skills you've got. As I talked about at the beginning of the show, the audiobook is different. So check out the audiobook if you have not already. I think you'd appreciate it, particularly if you're a fan of the show. Um, imagine the show, but I'm specifically talking about your career. And I think the audiobook is uh, maybe five hours, something like that. So imagine a deep dive. Speaking of deep dives with, with, uh, with Dr. Brown, the Dr. Brown, Dr. Dr. Brene Brown. Um, my shorts. Be sure and check those out because they're a really quick hit, thirty seconds or so each. I think you'll get a lot of it. I think you enjoy it. And you can see me over in Decentraland, one of the, um, one of the metaverses. Your boy's in the metaverse now, uh, working with the UPS store. And I have a series of videos where I'm talking about the metaverse and how you can take advantage of it um, as a small or medium-sized business owner, as well as as an entrepreneur. And lastly, be sure and check out the best emotion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm tripping today. The Better Emotional Intelligence Playlist. All the stuff I'm talking about today, all those videos are on there. I think you get a lot out of it. I think you enjoy it. Anyway, until next time, much love. Remember that you can always bring your worth. Thank you always build from now. Take care of yourselves.